This revision video is going to focus on isotopes. Isotopes essentially are um, different versions of uh, an element which have slightly different masses. Uh, specifically, you can define them as atoms of an element which have the same number of protons and therefore same atomic number. The atomic number is the number at the bottom of the symbol in the periodic table, but a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. Uh, therefore, they have a different mass number. That's the number at the top uh, of the uh, symbol for that element in the periodic table. So they have the same number of protons, and therefore they have the same. They are essentially the same element, but they have a different number of neutrons in their nucleus. Little table here as an aide memoir. Don't forget, there are three types of subatomic particle. That's the protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus, and the nucleus is where the majority of the mass that makes up an atom is found. So we have these relative masses and relative charges. They are relative because, of course, uh, atoms are incredibly small, and so they, these relative numbers are generated to make, the, uh, make these masses more appreciable. And they're relative to the uh, mass of 1 12th of an atom of carbon-12. So, essentially, we have a relative mass of 1 for a proton, and the relative charge of a proton is defined as being plus 1. So, the protons are the positive subatomic particles found in the nucleus. Uh, this is a neutron. Its relative mass is also 1, but its relative charge is 0. So, these are neutral uh, subatomic particles found in the nucleus. And electrons are much, much smaller than the protons and neutrons. Relative to the protons and neutrons, they have a mass of 1 over 1,850. That means they are 1,850 times smaller than the protons and neutrons. Therefore, their mass is essentially negligible. So you can also quote it as being 0 or 1 over, over 2,000. The charge of an electron is minus 1. And don't forget, the electrons are found orbiting the nucleus in the shells. So... An example of different isotopes. Hydrogen has three existing isotopes. That's hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, which is known as deuterium, and hydrogen 3, which is known as tritium. So let's deal with hydrogen 1 first of all. The mass number of hydrogen 1 is 1. Therefore, it has one uh, proton making up its nucleus and one single electron orbiting in the shell around the nucleus. Then we come onto this uh, isotope deuterium or hydrogen 2. This is a mass number of 2 telling us that there is more than one particle in that nucleus. There's a proton, but now there's also a neutron making up the nucleus and the single electron on the outside. You can see the mass number is 2 because the electron has such a small mass that it's basically negligible and can be ignored. So the mass number relates to the relative masses of the proton and neutron. Finally, we have the isotope number 3, which is hydrogen 3 or tritium. This has a mass number of 3, telling us that there's one proton and now two neutrons making up the nucleus and the single electron uh, orbiting in the shell uh, around the nucleus. So this number 3 tells us that there is a relative mass of 1 for the proton and then relative mass of 1 for the two protons, making a total of 3 as the mass number overall. However, all of these atoms have something in common. They still all have one proton, or their atomic number is 1 consistently. Therefore, they are all still hydrogen because their atomic number gives them their elemental identity. And they have one proton and therefore their atomic number is one and that still makes them hydrogen. Also, the chemical properties of these three, uh, these three isotopes will not vary or change because the chemical reactions and the chemical properties of elements is determined by their electron configuration and their outer shell uh, electron configuration in particular. The electron configuration of all these uh, isotopes is identical and the same and therefore the chemical properties will not change. They all have one electron in their outer shell. So the only thing that's really happening or changing between these isotopes is they're getting heavier as they have more neutrons in the nucleus. Second example would be carbon. So carbon has three existing isotopes. 98.9% of the carbon on the planet is carbon-12. Just about, around about approximately 1% is carbon-13 and a tiny percentage is carbon-14. So, first of all, let's consider the subatomic, subatomic particles found inside these isotopes. The atomic number of all three isotopes is six, therefore they all contain six protons. The number of protons has not changed, they have the same number of protons. Also, these are all atomic structures, they're all atoms of the elements, or the element carbon. Therefore, they are electronically neutral. To be electronically neutral, you need to have the same or equal numbers of protons and electrons to ensure you have a balance of charge because the protons are positive and electrons are negative. Therefore, all of these carbon atoms will contain six electrons held in two shells in the configuration 2, 4. 
The only thing that's changing is the number of neutrons. How do I work out the number of neutrons from these two numbers? Well, if the atomic number counts the number of protons, and the mass number counts the number of protons and neutrons together, if I take the atomic number from the mass number, I'll be left with the number of neutrons. So 12 minus 6 equals 6 neutrons for carbon-12. 13 minus 6 equals 7 neutrons for carbon-13. And 14 minus 6 equals 8 neutrons for carbon-14. So again, as you can see, these isotopes simply have different numbers of neutrons, but the same number of protons. So sometimes you might be asked to talk about the relative atomic mass of an atom. And first thing is this query. Why does chlorine have a mass number of 35.5 and copper has this weird number of 63.5? Can you get half a proton? and Can you get half a neutron? I don't think so. So there's something else going on here. These numbers are relative atomic masses. They are the averages of the various isotopes that exist. Remember, atoms are really small. So the mass numbers or the masses of the atoms are being are relative numbers and they're relative to each other being compared against the mass of one twelfth of an atom of carbon 12. So as a definition, relative atomic mass is an average value. It's the weighed average mass of an atom of an element compared relative to one twelfth the mass of an atom of carbon 12. But where do these averages come from? They're averages of what? As I said earlier on, they're the averages of the uh, isotopes nat that naturally occur, the abundances of those isotopes that naturally occur for that element. So let's take magnesium as an example. Magnesium doesn't just come as magnesium with a mass number of 24. It turns out that on this planet, 78.6% of the magnesium we find should have a mass of 24. However, about 10% of, uh, of the magnesium, 10.1% of the magnesium you find on this planet, has a mass number of 25, and about 11.3% of the magnesium found on this planet has a mass of 26. There are three different isotopes floating around out there, and we have to think about what well, the average of all these isotopes and their masses might be. So how do we do an average? Usually you should know that an average is the sum of the values divided by the total number of values. But these values also come with masses. So we have to account for those masses. So we know that 78.6% of the magnesium atoms have a mass of 24. So if we times the abundance by the mass, we're taking consideration the fact that, 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 that those particles have mass as well. So to work out the average uh, relative atomic mass of all, all of these isotopes, you take the uh, abundance times the mass for each isotope add them together as a sum, so it's abundance times mass for 24, plus the abundance times mass for 25, plus the abundance times mass for 26, and divide them by the total number of particles, which of course will be 100% of the particles, so it'll be 100. This gives us the value 24.3, which is the relative atomic mass and the average mass of the various isotopes of magnesium that exist. And that is how you would approach a relative atomic mass calculation, is the abundance times the mass added together to all the other possible abundance in the masses for the different isotopes that exist, divided by the total, which will always be 100% of the existing isotopes. Hopefully that helps you with relative atomic mass calculations and isotope knowledge, and I look forward to talking to you in the next video.